Welcome to the Women's Football Show here on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Kerry Pollock. Alison McConnell joins me and our first guest of the year, Ali. It's Glasgow City's Fiona Brown. Fiona, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Let's start right at the beginning then. Celtic is where you began, 36 appearances. Tell us about your time there. Yeah, um, God, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I came to the under-15s team in 2010, I think, um, or the end of tw to the 2009, maybe. Um, that was Paul Brownlee and Tina Ferguson, um, and we had just an unbelievable team that year. The, we don't think we lost a game, I think we dominated absolutely everything. We were beating under-17s teams when we were under-15, just a really good year. We had a really good squad, um, and then from there, Brian Delaney and Robert Doherty came to our cup final, I think it was, at, at Tory Glen, and uh, they just pulled me after out after the game out of the change room and were like, we want you to come to the first team. Yeah. I was only 15, so um, so yeah, it was a lot of conversations. Obviously, I grew up in Dunblane, so it was a lot of travel from my mum and dad, and I've got a big brother, so it was a lot of kind of, how fair is it that we're out how many nights a week with you? Mm -hmm. Um, when he ends at home and, and whatever. So I obviously was like, please, <laughs> like, I really want to do it. Um, and my mum, mum's quite a straight shooter and she questioned it at the time if, is she old enough? Is she developed enough? Is she, um, and yeah, I did it in the end and that was, it was great. I probably in hindsight was too young, was too small. Um, but football was different then. It was, uh, I learned so much from it and I'm glad that that is the way it went. But Obviously now you've got a lot more sports science, you've got a lot more mm -hmm. checks and a lot more progression. So yeah, so after that it was three years at the first team um, and we had a really good team at the first team too. I think probably, I don't know which year it was, but there was one year we really pushed City at the time, yeah. really close. Um, and on another day we could have maybe taken a result here or there against them. And at that time nobody had done that, nobody had mm -hmm. beat them in, in mm. so long. So. Um, so yeah, no, it was. I loved my time there. I'm obviously a big Celtic fan still to this day. So um, yeah, I had a really good time at Celtic. And you made the move then to Glasgow City. How was that change? Um, so at the time it was um, Eddie Lecky who was manager, and he'd tried to get me in at the end of each season that I'd been at Celtic, um, and I was young, and all my friends were at Celtic, and. Also, I think at that time I wasn't going to be able to play with Glasgow City. It was like the reserve team, like the Lisa Evans, Mitchie, mm. Mm -hmm. McMurchie, all of them were that reserves team. And I was a bit younger that I wasn't going to be allowed to play for like six months until I turned a certain age or something. Mm. So that was at the same time when I chose to go to Celtic. Um, but yeah, C City were the team. Mm to be at at that time. they full of internationalists, full of people that I'd grown up watching. Uh, they dominated the league. They played Champions League and my dream was to go and play professionally. And at that time you had to leave Scotland to do that. So it was my out really. Like it was the only way I was going to develop. And I had come back from an injury as well at Celtic and I felt like I needed to catch up again. Mm. Um, that I'd missed a year. So yeah, Monty came and she was sitting in my mum and dad's living room. She just gets out down onto the floor and like takes out all these newspaper articles. She was like, I don't need any more proof. And it was just like, champions, City make Champions League, like how many, ever many leagues in a row, all this stuff leading the way in Scottish football. And I was just like, I have nothing to say, like where does I sign? So, um, so yeah, no, and I didn't look back. That season was probably one of my favorite in my career, 2014. Um, we made the quarterfinals of the Champions League and got my first taste of Champions League was playing with the best players in, in Scotland. So, yeah. yeah, no, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And um, they gave me my chance. They gave me a platform to go and perform and I managed to go and perform and, and get a move. So it was, yeah. You've been away for almost a decade from, from Scottish football. What have you noticed about the changes that have taken place? I know you've not been up and running properly yet, you're only just back, you've barely had time to get your boots on and stuff, but what do you feel about the changes that have taken place in the top flight in that last decade that's been so important for the growth of the game? Yeah, for sure. I think it's so scary to me, or it feels so strange that when people say that in almost a decade, because I still think of myself as about 22, but... Um, Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I still act like it too, but uh, no. I've obviously followed the game from afar, 
Um, I've got so many close friends here in the league and then obviously through the national team I always had the connection to the Scottish League. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's it speaks for itself the last game of the season last year, for example. The crowds, the tightness of the, the top three. Um, I think there's still a long way to go, having been away mm -hmm. um, in a league that's been professional for a long time. Um, and that just comes with time and continued investment and continued development. And I think it's amazing to see it's coming back, the, the transformation. When, when I left Glasgow City, we trained in school car, um, not car parks, school pitches, mm -hmm. parked in the car park, put your boots on in the car and went out and trained, got back in the car and went home. And that was just normal. Mm -hmm. and then got up in the morning, went to uni or work and trained mm -hmm. six to eight or seven to nine at night time. And then flash forward to now, you're in every day, full professional environment, you've got your activation at the gym, you've got your physio there full time, you've got strength and conditioning, you've got sports science, you're monitored, everything that you do, analysis every day. You can live as a full time professional. And when I grew up that wasn't an option in Scotland anywhere. Um, City always had a professional environment mm -hmm. but to a point that they could mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. being people. Um, so yeah, like it's it's night and day and it's amazing. I'm really like I'm really chuffed to be back and I think it's really exciting to be to be a part of this change. Um, obviously I always felt a part of it a little bit in, in the national team but it's different being here mm -hmm. in the league and hopefully helping it grow and just continuing the work that people have done already. Are you here to help City retain that title? Of course, that's the plan. Um, now I left City a champion, I want to, I want to come back and, and be a champion again, like I'm, that's no secret. Um, I've always been, I've been really, really fortunate to be in teams that have been at the top um, throughout my career. So even in, in Sweden, that was the expectation all the time. The, you had a target on your back all the time. Um, and I'm used to that and I like that. That's where, that's how I've learned to be a footballer really. Um, so yeah, I think it's got to be the aim. It's, we're obviously in a situation now that we need to go and take points from the teams above us. And I think that's what's exciting about having this split, that nothing's done until it's done. Look at last year, City were flying a way out ahead and came down to the last game of the season. Um, so anything can happen and it's got to be one game at a time and take take points every week. That's mm -hmm. pretty much what you've got to do regardless of what, what team you're playing against. Sunday's game so pivotal because if you rein Celtic in, I bet I think they're five points ahead of you at the minute. If you rein that in a bit, then all of a sudden there's nothing again between yeah. that top three. Absolutely, all to play for. I think if we take, if we can get a result on Sunday, then everything is blown wide open. And I think both Rangers and Celtic are very aware of that as well. Mm -hmm. You are familiar with the new Celtic coach, Elena Siddiqui. Tell us about about time. What do you know about her? Yeah, Elena's uh, no, she's a lovely girl. Um, she's obviously. Been out in Sweden. She's she's Swedish, so I met her um, through her time at Rosengard. She was in the youth section, heading up the youth section, and then she came into the first team as one of the assistants. Um, and actually, at that time, I was injured and coming back from from injury, and she really went out her way to to help me. I did loads of individual technical work, and she um, she actually had a gym. Um, in Malmo that I went and used just to be in a different environment and stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, we got on really well. She has been really good to me um, throughout my time in Sweden. Um, so, and even just when I came back after my, my last injury, she one of the ones that sent me a lovely message and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So yeah, she, she's been through it. She was a really good player herself and unfortunately had to stop because of injury. Um, so I think we get that. Uh, kind of like yeah both been through some of the things so yeah and it's exciting to see that another young female is coming into a really a really big role and it is a big role I think a club like Celtic the badge is known right around the world so yeah it's a, a massive move for her and um, so yeah I was quick to congratulate her um, and another familiar face so I hope that we beat her on Sunday right enough but yeah no I wish her all the best. Three, coach, three female coaches, Alison, now in the top three teams. Yeah, I think it's fantastic to see. I think there was a point not so long ago where you'd have struggled mm -hmm. to have envisaged that. I think uh, 
it, you know, I think it's fantastic for the game. You look back at last summer's World Cup when it got to the quarter-final stage, there was only one female coach uh, down in the last eight. I think what you want to see, I think you want to see the progression progression of coaches, female coaches coming to the fore. Now, I think that's like the next driver. Really, you've got um, a platform for female players trying to develop elite-level players at elite competition. I think the next opportunity is for more coaches to start coming through too. Yeah, definitely. Just before we look at the games at the weekend, Fiona, in Sweden you said that you played and worked with some of the best players in the world. Tell us who you met and who you were inspired by. Yeah, I mean, I've been really, really fortunate. Like I said before, I've been in teams all my career with top players. Um, obviously, when I went up to the Celtic first team at that time, it was all internationalists. There was the Joe Loves, there was the Stacey Cook, Mandy Burns, all of that era, mm -hmm. Gemma Faye. Um, and then I got to play with Julie Fleetin, who was a hero to every person in this country, I think, at, at uh, one time. And then, obviously, moving to City, it was just all internationals. So mm. I've been really, really lucky, and it was the same in Sweden, obviously, moving there. Um, I walked through the door first day, and there's Anja Mitag sitting there. Won everything in the game that's possible to win. I think she's genuinely, her stats are that every country she's played in, she's won everything there is to win. Wow. And it was cool because 2018 we won the Swedish Cup and that was her last thing to tick off. Um, so she was one that I really, I remember watching her when City played Potsdam. Mm -hmm. And she was incredible, unbelievable. So she's always been a bit of a hero for me. I had 31 at Celtic, number 31, which was mm -hmm. her number as well. Um, and then Caroline Sager, I don't think there's enough words for her. She's obviously one of my best friends now. We've... Um, become really good friends over the years but uh, on a footballing perspective for me she's the best six to play in the women's game um, I think for so many years to do what she's done and go under the radar a bit to be honest um, just her understanding of the game I don't think I've ever been on the ball on a football pitch and she's not available to play with um, so on a football perspective she's she's second to none but as a leader she's probably the best leader I've ever come across, mm -hmm. just her way to capture a, a dressing room. She has the respect. She probably has the respect of the nation in Sweden, actually. Mm -hmm. But to walk into a dressing room, she has a way of including absolutely everyone in there. She knows when it's time to be serious, but she knows how to have a laugh. And to be fair, that was our relationship. We sat together for six years. And like I said, she's one of my best friends, but probably the most humble human being I've ever met. And just a good friend. They've, I mean, there's endless people in that team. Olivia Skoog's one. Emma Berglund's one, they're all my close friends, so I'm not just bigging up my close <laughs> friends, but uh, Goddess Perla, she's obviously gone off and gone to Bayern. and we came into Rosengard. We were at Eskostina together and then Rosengard, so she's my best mate, but to see her development is fantastic, and she's such a hard worker and such a, a good girl that you want nothing but mm -hmm. good things for her. But yeah, no, these people are just, I think my biggest thing that I took from Sweden was that I was surrounded by success and surrounded by people that could have been really big-headed and mm. arrogant and they were anything but that. Mm. Anya Mitag would stay behind training and we would practice my crosses into her first time finishing and we'd do it on a Sunday and she'd be the first to be so buzzing about it. So you've scored about three million goals in your career and you're still buzzing about this tap-in because we've trained on it. Um, so yeah, I know these people just, I've made friends for life obviously is one thing but they've just been a real influence on my career, hard work and I owe, owe it to them that I'm still playing. I've said that a million times too, both Rose and Garden, but most of all, the, those girls around me were the ones that forced me to still keep going and do the rehab and come back. And because of that, I've got loads more memories to make and have made loads more memories because of that. So, yeah, I owe them a lot and I definitely miss them. But, um, yeah, no, they were, they were amazing. And during your time in Sweden as well, you also came across, uh, being a big Celtic fan, Henrik Larsson as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, came across, I've probably stalked him a wee bit, but no. <laughs> um, my old coach Rose, uh, in Rosengard, Jonas uh, Edeval, he was his assistant in Helsingborg, so I think they, they were close friends, and he got wind that I was a big Celtic fan, so one year for my birthday, they got me a birthday video that he'd sent, and then he had signed a top for me and stuff going for going to the World Cup 2019, um, and then we saw him on the golf course one day when we were playing golf, like just... Just random, but yeah, no, what a player, really, yeah. like, class. Yeah, can across that way as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think 
I'm a Celtic fan, so I think in Glasgow he's the king of kings, isn't he? So, yeah. Well, it depends what side of Glasgow That's you're the title by, yes. <laughs> Ali, Ali, let's move on to the fixtures then coming up at the weekend. We've got Hibernian taking on Motherwell, Aberdeen will face Rangers, Montrose face Partick Thistle, Glasgow City will take on Celtic, Hearts against Spartans and Dundee United against Hamilton. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the games, Ali, you were at the Sky Sports Cup on Friday night uh, speaking to Joe Potter on how her Rangers team have come on. We've, we've worked hard to be in this position, you know, um, I think we do it daily, wait day in, day out. Um, we keep pushing, we keep striving. Uh, we want to win things, that's why I came up here. I said before the game to the girls that this is their trophy to keep. It's not mine, you know, I'd like to get my hands on it, but it's not mine. It's their trophy to keep. Um, and it was up to them, up to, them to, to give themselves a chance to do that by getting in the final. And, and you know, they absolutely were brilliant today and, and managed to get into that final. Deserving winners in the end, Ali? Yeah, I thought they were comfortable. I know Celtic pegged them back twice, the two penalties get back into it, but I thought Rangers were the better team overall. I thought they were much more dominant in the game. I thought they created a lot of chances. Um, I had a bit of a question mark over Celtic's second penalty. I thought Tessa Weedag took the ball. I didn't think it was a, a penalty. Um, I just wonder how, how long Celtic might take to adapt to a new coach, to the changes that have come on. I think Fran Alonso was very well liked within the Celtic dressing room. I think he took them really close to, to claiming their first title last season, obviously. And I think his departure was fairly sudden in the circumstances that it came around. And I think uh, maybe just caught a few people by surprise. It'll be interesting to see how quickly Elena Saduko goes in and poses her own style, her own methodology, her own way of playing and gets the best out of Celtic. I'm not sure you've seen Celtic at their best in the two games that they've played against Rangers so far uh, this term, and I think they'll want to, to try and correct that. I think Sunday's a big day for Celtic too. Obviously, you know, the, the ramifications of the outcome on Sunday are fairly significant for how the league now goes on and develops, whether or not they stretch the gap between City or if, Celt if City uh, rein them back in again, then all of a sudden you're looking at a top three that there's very little between, I think it's a fairly intriguing end to the campaign. And I think the split enhances that. I think uh, the split means that the best are playing the best. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, again, so, you, so you'll see a situation like last term where teams then start to drop points and you can eat into a lead. But uh, just a word about that final two, obviously Thistle. Uh, going in and um, we'll see what happens with that if Brian Graham's available or not to go and take charge of it. Yeah, he is double booked. Uh, how would the leagues go about that? Will he have time? Do you think there'll be something sorted? Will a date be changed? I think there, there has to be a bit of give yeah. somewhere along the line. I think it'd probably be easier probably to change Thistle's game against our broth mm -hmm. than it would be to change the final. Although I take the argument too that a lot of the girls within the Thistle squad are part-time. They're all juggling work commitments. Some of them might have work commitments on a Saturday. It's maybe easier to play it on the Sunday. So I think there's got to be a few conversations round about the, the fixture. Um, but I certainly think you need your manager in place. This yeah. is a women's, it's a national final. You want to showcase the game at its very best. You cannot possibly have the manager of one of the clubs not able to take part in yeah. it. No, I agree with that. Uh, Fiona, obviously City take on Celtic this weekend. What are you expecting, first of all? Yeah, no, it's a big game. Um, I think every game from here on in is a big game, to be honest. Like you say, the split is coming thick and fast, so that means it's the best teams that you're playing against. Um, but yeah, no, I think, like you say, I don't think Celtic were at their best against Rangers. I think they're mm -hmm. capable of playing a lot better. Um, it's hard. I've seen games, I've watched games, but it's a different... I've got no feeling of having played against them in the last how many yeah. years, which I think you always get a better feeling by just mm. being in a game, mm -hmm. which is quite nice for me. It's a, a fresh slate, go out and play football. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, no, it's a big game. I think we know how Celtic play. I think everyone mm. has seen that, and it'll be interesting to see if Elena comes in and makes changes or if she doesn't. And, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to second-guess that. We'll obviously go in this week and, and do our analysis and... Yeah, the analysts and the coaches at, at City, that's one thing I've been really impressed with. So mm -hmm. uh, they go in and they do their work um, and then they feed back that mm -hmm. to us. So, yeah. Do you feel ready to start? Physically yeah. ready to start? Yeah. Yeah, and we'll see if that... I don't get to make that decision. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been really well taken care of um, since coming in. And the sports science, obviously, I'm monitoring me and they taper me and they look after my body. Just That's just how I need to be nowadays, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. But 
it's also good because it means that I'm always mm -hmm. hopefully going to be fresh. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see where the body's at come Sunday. Mm -hmm. We'll see um, what the decisions is that's made mm -hmm. um, surrounding that, both tactically, technically and medically. So it's a, It could be a fairly gruelling season for you when you consider when your campaign started, how long you've been playing for and the fact that obviously then you've had so little downtime. It's essentially 18 months of a season. Yeah, I think obviously it's been... Uh, it's unfortunate the way the Swedish league runs is that it clashes to we at the, we're at the end of our season last year and then I've obviously come in here to, to the middle of the season but no like I've said I've been really well looked after I've had a decent amount of time off I've had build up I've really been well well looked after and I feel good um, I'm just excited to go and play football I just that's why I came home I want to go out and I want to play football and these are the games you want to play so yeah it's um, I don't think you think about that so much as a player in the moment. Um, ask me again in May how I'm feeling and <laughs> we might have a different <laughs> conversation. But no, I feel really good. And like I said, I can't, can't um, praise the medical team and the sports science team at Glasgow City enough for the care and the attention to detail that they are taking and will continue to take over me as well. What's the big difference between the Fiona who walked out of Glasgow City and the Fiona who walked back in? God. <laughs> I hope a lot. Um, no, I think I've said this before. Obviously, I was young, fresh, raw um, when I left, just a kid. And I think I was in a very privileged position that I was surrounded by people that took the responsibility off my shoulders. Um, I obviously scored big goals for the club and had moments where I maybe won a game or, or whatever. Um, but I was able to do that because I was just given the role to play free and, and to be myself and um, I think as much as I still play that free way, that's just how I am as, as a footballer, I definitely have more responsibility um, that comes with age, it comes with experience. Um, I've been through a lot in terms of my career, um, both good and the bad um, and I think that probably forms you as a player. Like I said, the people in Sweden taught me, taught me a lot about how to be a good teammate and how to be a real professional um, and I tried to do that so yeah no I've got a responsibility on my shoulders obviously uh, the position I play like every other forward in the team regardless of age is your responsibility is to create and score goals um, so that's something I need to do but yeah definitely hopefully older I'm not sure I'm wiser but um, <laughs> definitely definitely more experience and a lot more responsibility and maybe not as um, naive and just young really um, I've learned I've learned a lot and hopefully that's going to put me in good stead to to come back and there's a lot of good leaders in Glasgow City already but hopefully I can just back that up and try and lead by example on the pitch as well. It's strange seeing Leanne as your boss and your gaffer rather than your teammate. See to be honest it's not at all for me because she always was one. <laughs> She played behind me at Glasgow City or on the opposite side and she was coaching me from, from then even as well. So she's always been that player. She's always been so tactically aware and um, there's a lot of similarities between her as a coach and as a player. Like you can come in in the dressing room and things be winning and thinking we've done pretty well. But she's a perfectionist and that intentional t attention to detail will be brought forward and and shown and that was exactly the same as, as games. I remember scoring, I don't know if I'd scored two goals or something in a game years ago and coming in and again being young, maybe having a wee bit silly at half time, just like, oh we're fine, like we've won the game, whatever. And not not even like whatever, but just you know what I mean, mm -hmm. a young a young character and uh, I was just put right in my face to be honest. <laughs> just sat down and just told to basically hold my mouth and go out and get the job done. So um, and I didn't score in the second half and I remember thinking, God, maybe if I'd been more focused I could have got a hat-trick. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But she planted those seeds and she's the same as a coach and I've obviously had her in the national team as an mm -hmm. assistant as well. So, um, so yeah, no, she's still shouting at me. She never <laughs> stops shouting at me, really. <laughs> um, but that's OK, I'd prefer it that way. We've we've always got on really well and I've always had a lot of respect for her and that that's still the same. Well, best of luck at the weekend then. On behalf of myself and Alison, thanks for joining us. Fiona, we'll be back next week with some more action to look forward to. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.